Hello everyone. In this session, we'll be learning about the embryology of endocrine system. So, endocrine system is formed by endocrine organs. What do we understand by endocrine organs? The organs which secrete their secretions directly into the bloodstream. Okay, those are endocrine organs. So, so what all topics we'll be covering in this particular session? We'll be covering the these three organs in details: development of pituitary gland, adrenal gland, and thyroid gland okay and i'll just give a brief overview of these three endocrine organs pineal gland thymus and parathyroid okay so before beginning with the embryology of the organs proper you should have a general plan to study the organs okay for example any organ if asked in embryology as a short note or if any question is asked at least these four points you should mention okay what is the germ layer of origin of that particular organ what is the primordial embryological structure which gives rise to that organ then approximate age of the embryo like like which age of the intrauterine life the particular organ is developing and lastly you can write about the anomalies or clinical correlation with respect to that embryology okay so so if you remember these four points and mention it so that would suffice for the embryology of organs okay so let's begin with the pituitary gland first so this is just an orientation to give you the location of the pituitary gland mid sagittal section of the brain is taken the pituitary stalk this is the infundibulum which extends down as the pituitary gland and this bone this is the cella tertia right and this is the anterior pituitary posterior pituitary and there is an intermediate pituitary which has got a cleft in between okay so so for pituitary gland what is the germ layer of origin as we can see two color shades here one is yellow colored and other is blue colored yellow colored structure is showing the neuroectoderm okay so one germ layer from the upper part there is neuroectoderm and from the lower part it is the ectoderm of the primitive oral cavity okay so in the upper part and the lower part both are ectoderm but one is neuroectoderm and other is just ectoderm okay what is the difference between neuroectoderm and the only ectoderm neuroectoderm is the one which forms the brain and the spinal cord right so there is an extension from the neuroectoderm here and from the ectoderm of the oral cavity this extension is referred to as rathke's pouch okay so rathke's pouch and neuroectodermal diverticulum they form the pituitary gland okay so rathke's pouch eventually gets cut off from the stomodium and here we can see the neurohypophysis the neuroectodermal diverticulum it forms the neurohypophysis and the part which comes from the primitive oral cavity that forms the adenohypophysis okay these are the two parts of the pituitary gland adenohypophysis is also referred to as the pars anterior and neurohypophysis is the pars posterior right so for germ layer you can remember as neuroectoderm which forms the neurohypophysis or the pars posterior and ectoderm from the primitive oral cavity that forms the adenohypophysis that is nothing but the pars anterior okay and what is the primordium which forms this from the upper part here we can see the third ventricle the floor of the third ventricle or we can say the it's an extension from the hypothalamus okay so in the upper part the primordium is hypothalamus and in the lower part it is the primitive oral cavity okay ectodermal lining of the primitive oral cavity and approximate age of the embryo is approximately about 3 weeks okay 3 weeks of intrauterine life and the fourth heading which we should remember is the clinical correlation or anomalies so that i'll cover in the end so these three points and the fourth point is anomalies or clinical correlations okay in this way we will have to learn about the various development of the organs okay so germ layer is ectoderm neuroectoderm primordium rathke's pouch and the hypothalamus okay 
so this ectodermal lining of the primitural cavity which extends up it's also referred to as rathke's pouch and age here is third week of the intrauterine life and applied i'll cover later on so this shows the various parts of the pituitary gland formed by the neuroectoderm and ectoderm okay so the yellow colored area which we can see the infundibulum pars posterior okay this is formed by the neuroectoderm okay and ectoderm forms the pars anterior pars intermedia as well as pars tuberalis okay surrounding the infundibulum there is pars tuberalis so this subdivisions we should know that neuroectoderm forms which part of the pituitary gland and ectoderm forms which part of the pituitary gland okay now let's cover the clinical correlation with respect to the development of pituitary gland so there is one clinical condition called as craniopharyngioma okay whenever the term is oma that means there is some tumor in that region so so this tumor is in the craniopharyngeal canal what do we understand by craniopharyngeal canal craniopharyngeal canal it's the tract of the rathke's pouch okay we know that rathke's pouch is an extension from the primitive oral cavity going upwards so that tract is nothing but the craniopharyngeal canal okay ideally it should get cut off and it forms the pars anterior right but if in case it doesn't get cut off so a canal persists that is referred to as the craniopharyngeal canal okay so this canal is between the roof of the nasopharynx and floor of the hypophyseal fossa okay so this tumor craniopharyngeoma we may find between these two structures okay between the roof of the nasopharynx and floor of the hypophyseal fossa okay so this is one of the applied embryology aspect of pituitary gland okay so craniopharyngeoma it's a remnant of or we can say a tumor in the remnant of craniopharyngeal canal okay now let's cover the next organ adrenal gland we can see the right sided kidney and this is the adrenal gland also referred to as suprarenal gland right so just like we covered the pituitary gland under four headings similarly we'll cover the adrenal gland as well so what is the germ layer of origin of adrenal gland then what is the primordium of the adrenal gland what is the approximate age and lastly the clinical correlation or anomalies with respect to the adrenal gland okay so this is just a schematic diagram to show the various sources of development of the adrenal gland germ layer can you try to appreciate from this diagram we can see some mesoderm written here so there is one germ layer that is mesoderm right adrenal gland as we all know that there is an outer part that is called as the adrenal cortex and the inner part there is adrenal medulla okay so the adrenal cortex part is formed by the mesoderm and adrenal medulla part it is formed by this neuro neural crest cells okay so neural crest cells and mesoderm these are the germ layers neural crest cells are uh, like they are detached part from the ectoderm only okay so mesoderm and but uh, whenever neural crest word is mentioned we should label it as neural crest cells and not as ectoderm okay so mesoderm and neural crest cells they are the two germ layers that we can remember for adrenal gland then primordium for adrenal gland primordium is in this region okay this is the intraembryonic coelom there is an coelomic epithelium so the ep coelomic epithelium it proliferates to form the suprarenal ridge okay this is the primordium for the adrenal cortex okay and approximate age of the embryo is it's approximately about 6 weeks of intrauterine life okay 
and if we see there is something called as fetal cortex and there is one definitive cortex the initial cells which come here the fetal cortex the cells are larger in size okay and the definitive cortex the cells are smaller in size okay so there are two batch of cells which come here fetal cortex uh, after birth it will like involute and the definitive cortex will remain in place okay so in adrenal gland development germ layer we should remember is one is mesoderm and other is neural crest cells primordium is cells of the coelomic epithelium which form the suprarenal ridge and approximate age of the embryo is 6th week of intrauterine life okay and the fourth heading to be covered is clinical correlation or anomalies with respect to that particular organ so during development of the adrenal gland there might be ectopic adrenal tissue so ectopic tissue may be in the kidney or in the liver okay in the kidney it may be like below the capsule of the kidney okay then there is a condition called as congenital adrenal hyperplasia it's a genetic disorder due to uh, like one enzyme is deficient in that 21 hydroxylase deficiency in which androgens increase okay as the word implies congenital adrenal hyperplasia so increase in the androgen levels so this may lead to adrenogenital syndrome and it has got different manifestations in male and female in male there may be early development of secondary sexual characters okay and in female enlargement of the clitoris which may look like penis and the condition is also referred to as pseudo hermaphroditism okay it, it is difficult to differentiate whether the external genitalia is of male or female okay so adrenogenital syndrome having different manifestations in male and female okay so in adrenal gland clinical correlation these three points you can remember ectopic adrenal tissue then congenital adrenal hyperplasia and adrenogenital syndrome it's, it's a consequence of this only congenital adrenal hyperplasia okay so this was all about the adrenal gland let's move on to the development of the thyroid gland now so thyroid gland what is the germ layer of origin this is a diagram showing the floor of the primitive pharynx these are the pharyngeal apparatus which are seen the pharyngeal arches lingual swellings tuberculum impar then hypobranchial eminence if we see between the tuberculum impar and the hypobranchial eminence there is a region called as foramen cecum okay from this region the thyroid gland starts to develop okay so there is a diverticulum from the foramen cecum downwards endodermal diverticulum that leads to the formation of thyroid gland okay so the germ layer is endoderm okay and primordium is the cells uh, which develop from the floor of the primitive pharynx and approximate age here is also third week okay third week of intrauterine life so how is the development we can see there is one endo endodermal thickening at the level of the foramen cecum so that extends downwards out pouching of the endodermal thickening and this is the primordium of the thyroid gland okay germ layer endoderm primordium is this the endodermal thickening which proliferates approximate age we discussed it is third week of intrauterine life so just appreciate this the roman letters are written in the series of development first second third fourth fifth and sixth okay so there is an extension of this endodermal thickening downwards if we trace it down there is bifid lower end of the thyroglossal duct so here we can see the developing thyroid from the thyroglossal duct and additionally some cells are coming from the caudal pharyngeal complex into the thyroid gland 
okay uh, in the thyroid there is something called as para follicular or c cells of the thyroid gland in between the thyroid fo follicles so for that germ layer is different okay caudal pharyngeal complex it's actually developed from the neural crest cells okay so germ layer in addition to endoderm you can also mention neural crest cells specifically for the para follicular cells of the thyroid gland okay so germ layer we have covered primordium approximate age and this will further develop into the thyroid gland proper okay ideally the thyroglossal duct should disappear okay if it persists it leads to anomalies that we'll discuss later on so this is the thyroid gland scene and there might be some extension just about the isthmus that is the pyramidal lobe and there are two lateral lobes the intermediate part is the isthmus okay here is the apex of the thyroid gland and lower part is the base of the thyroid gland okay so germ layer is endoderm as well as the neural crest cells through the caudal pharyngeal complex that forms the para follicular c cells of the thyroid gland primordium is endodermal thickening age is third week of the intrauterine life okay and whenever a question is asked in the exam this diagram you are supposed to draw okay an endodermal thickening then extension of it then bifid thyroglossal duct okay Sim it's a simple diagram which can be drawn in exam which easily shows the development of thyroid gland then this diagram shows the pathway of the thyroglossal duct it doesn't uh, descend vertically downwards in a straight line it has got a particular course and this course is important because a uh, thyroid gland might be lying in the course of this thyroglossal duct okay you can see this is the region of the foramen cecum it is extending downwards anteriorly then just in front of the hyoid bone it is going behind taking a slight u turn coming down again so that's how a curved shape is taken by the thyroglossal duct to reach its anatomical site and at times thyroid tissue may be found in the course of this thyroglossal duct okay that's why this course is important so there might be lingual thyroid infralingual thyroid suprahyoid thyroid infrahyoid thyroid okay because in relation to the hyoid bone above the hyoid bone is suprahyoid below the hyoid bone is infrahyoid right so according to the path of the thyroglossal duct we can remember the uh, various locations as an anomalies of thyroid gland okay so in clinical correlation this point we have already covered anomalies of position thyroid gland may be seen in a different position with respect to the thyroglossal duct then there might be anomalies in the lobes as well as shapes of the thyroid gland one lobe might be small one lobe might be large then one sided lobe may be absent then the isthmus may be absent then an elongated pyramidal lobe may be seen okay so these are the certain variations in the lobes and shapes of the thyroid gland then there might be ectopic thyroid tissue ectopic means it is away from the path of the thyroglossal duct okay it may be in the larynx lower down in the trachea or esophagus then in the pericardium or pleura okay remember the difference between anomalies of position which was discussed here and ectopic thyroid tissue here anomalies of position was in the tract of the thyroglossal duct okay but it is but if it is away from the tract of the thyroglossal duct that will be referred to as ectopic thyroid tissue okay there are the various sites which have been described in the books larynx trachea esophagus pericardium and pleura then there might be thyroglossal cyst or fistula uh, we said that the thyroglossal duct should disappear okay in case if it if it persists it will lead to thyroglossal cyst and it may open onto the exterior that will lead to thyroglossal fistula okay 
so these are certain things uh, which we can remember in applied embryology of the thyroid gland okay now let's uh, cover the other endocrine organs so i'll just give a brief overview of other endocrine organs so how is the pineal gland developed pineal gland is developed from the roof of the third ventricle okay from the posterior part of the roof of the third ventricle the, there is a cavity of the third ventricle diencephalon uh, as we all know there are primary uh, primary and the secondary brain vesicles one of the primary brain vesicle is prosencephalon prosencephalon divides into telencephalon and diencephalon okay diencephalon gives rise to the thalamus hypothalamus metathalamus all those structures okay so there is a cavity there that is referred to as the third ventricle so there is an outpouching from the posterior part of the roof of the third ventricle so this diverticulum enlarges and the clumps of cells develop here so that forms the definitive pineal gland okay and there is a stalk of the pineal gland on the anterior aspect there is superior lamina and inferior lamina of the stalk so one thing if we have to remember for development of the pineal gland is it is a diverticulum from the posterior part of the roof of the third ventricle okay so it is neuroectodermal in origin and what does the pineal gland secrete what is the endocrine function of pineal gland it secretes melatonin okay melatonin now let's cover the development of thymus so thymus is also an endocrine gland which secretes an hormone called as thymosin so in the development of the uh, pharyngeal apparatus thymus is also described okay so it is arising from the third pharyngeal pouch so on the inner aspect there is endoderm and the depressions are referred to as the pouches so from the third pharyngeal pharynge pouch there is an extension which forms the thymus okay and along with this third pharyngeal pouch of the thymus there is parathyroid gland as well okay you can see the parathyroid gland here this is actually the inferior parathyroid and the superior parathyroid is located here okay why superior is below and inferior is above because thymus ultimately has to descend down down in the superior mediastinum right so when it descends down it also takes along with it the parathyroid gland okay that's why its position comes lower down as compared to that of the superior parathyroid gland in adult life okay embryological origin is above the superior parathyroid but because of the descent of the thymus inferior parathyroid gland comes below as compared to that of the superior parathyroid gland okay so for thymus germ layer we can remember as the endoderm let's see the development of the parathyroid gland we can see the posterior borders of the thyroid gland showing small rounded parathyroid gland okay so two superior and two inferior parathyroid glands are seen so just as we covered in the previous slide along with the thymus there is inferior parathyroid and the superior parathyroid is in relation with the fourth pharyngeal pouch okay so the germ layer here is also endoderm so this was just a brief overview of the other endocrine organs and the endocrine organs which i covered initially so for that you will have to read about all the four headings which i have taught okay so let's just summarize what we have covered in this particular session so we covered the development of the pituitary gland what is the germ layer for pituitary gland it is neuroectoderm as well as ectoderm okay neuroectoderm forms the pars posterior and ectoderm forms the pars anterior right then primordium for the pituitary gland in the upper part there is hypothalamus or floor of the third ventricle 
and in the lower part there is rathke's pouch from the uh, primitive oral cavity okay an approximate age for the pituitary gland is the third week of the intrauterine life and clinical correlation we learnt about the craniopharyngioma okay and in adrenal gland what is the germ layer the two germ layers right for the adrenal cortex there is mesoderm and adrenal medulla there is neural crest cells primordium for the adrenal gland the suprarenal ridge in the coelomic epithelium okay approximate age is 6 6th week of the intrauterine life and in clinical correlation we learnt about the congenital adrenal hyperplasia then ectopic adrenal tissue adrenogenital syndrome okay and in thyroid gland the germ layer is endoderm as well as neural crest cells which forms the parafollicular c cells of the thyroid gland primordium is in the floor of the primitive pharynx in the region of the foramen cecum the endodermal thickening approximate age is 3 weeks and in anomalies we learnt about the anomalies in the position of the thyroid gland then ectopic thyroid gland thyroglossal cyst fistula okay so these three endocrine organs in details we will have to remember and i just covered overview of these three endocrine organs pineal gland arising from the posterior part of the roof of the third ventricle okay so the germ layer is neuroectoderm thymus thymus and parathyroid they both coming from the pharyngeal apparatus okay from the third pharyngeal pouch is thymus and for parathyroid gland superior parathyroid gland is from the fourth pharyngeal pouch and inferior parathyroid gland is arising along with the thymus from the third pharyngeal pouch okay for pdf handout of this session you all can whatsapp me at this number and please do watch other sessions of this youtube channel okay thank you